Okay, so this video is going to talk about the uh, economic effects of a, a minimum wage and then also talk a little bit about the uh, recent uh, controversies uh, in, in economics over the, the effects of the, the minimum wage. This is a, a simple supply and demand diagram and a minimum wage is a price uh, floor that you impose in the market for in the labor market. So uh, I have the diagram with the supply and demand drawn out here and the equilibrium where would be where the demand and supply curves intersect. So this, this would really be uh, you're back to uh, like chapter one uh, or, or micro principles. We have the uh, equilibrium wage and the equilibrium quantity of labor. And then we've got a minimum wage that we are going to have set above the, uh, the equilibrium wage. We could also consider, since the uh, actual the issue in the United States now is raising the minimum wage, which we already have a minimum wage, that would be showing that the effect of having one minimum wage above the uh, equilibrium and then they're boosting it up to a higher minimum wage. It's just a little bit easier to draw the diagram here to compare the equilibrium to the implementation of a minimum wage. And uh, it was before some of the, the recent uh, increases in the minimum wages uh, across the country in some cities and states, Probably in, in a lot of cities and states, the, uh, the the federal minimum wage had gotten, you know, with, with the effects of inflation and not having been changed for a long time, it really pretty much, uh, you know, we, we might not have really had much of a binding minimum wage in place. So I have this diagram uh, drawn out here. Now, it, again, if you remember from uh, you know, you know, principles, we would have covered a, a price of floor, you know, price floor above the equilibrium, above the equilibrium level. And uh, you read over to the demand curve and down, and that's going to give you the quantity demanded at, at the uh, that at that price. You read over to the supply curve and down, and that's going to give you the the quantity supplied at that price. So obviously, since demand curves slope down, the uh, quantity demanded, which remember for labor is firms. Firms are demanding labor, so the quantity of labor demanded would be lower than the equilibrium quantity, and then. It, at a higher wage than the equilibrium wage, since the supply curve is upward sloping, the number of people who would want to work with the amount of work, uh, the amount of labor time available, that people would be willing to work at a higher wage would be larger. So you have the, uh, the quantity of labor supplied is greater than the equilibrium quantity. The quantity of labor demanded is less than the equilibrium quantity. Transactions in a market have to be voluntary. So in this case here, we, we have to have a voluntary transaction taking place. So the uh, short side, when you have a, uh, when the market's not clearing, the old line is the short side of the market rolls. Uh, LS would be the number of uh, units of labor that people would be willing to supply or willing to uh, work at the uh, minimum wage. LD is the, amount of, is the amount of labor that firms are willing to hire. We have to have both a willing buyer and a willing seller, so the shorter side of the market, the smaller of these two quantities, is going to determine the quantity in the market. So if we look and say, how many people would be hired in this market with the minimum wage in place, it would be LD. And so one thing we can see is that since LD is smaller than LEQ, in, uh, jobs would be lost to the minimum wage. So when we talk, when economists talk about the effects of the minimum wage, and lost jobs, it's that this difference here between the uh, the uh, equilibrium quantity and the uh, quantity of labor demanded. Now we want to investigate the uh, consumer and producer surplus effects of the minimum wage. So what I've done is uh, I, I like to use numbers to refer to the areas on the graph, and so I've, I've labeled the uh, relevant areas. Area one would be this uh, triangle above this uh, dotted line. Area two is this rectangle here uh, between W min and W EQ up to LD. Area three is this triangle here below the demand curve in between LD and LQ. Uh, area four is, I guess, this trapezoid down here below the equilibrium uh, wage and above the supply curve up to LD. And area five is this triangle between LD and LQ below the equilibrium wage and above the supply curve. So we have those five areas uh, labeled, and we're going to use those to talk about the uh, consumer and producer surplus. And our consumer surplus is the area that's below the demand curve and above the price. In equilibrium, I'm going to go right over here. In equilibrium, below the demand curve and above the equilibrium price, that's this triangle here, and that includes areas one, two, and three. So I'm going to come over here and say, 
consumer surplus at the equilibrium would be areas one, two, and three. And producer surplus at the equilibrium wage, well, it would be the uh, producer surplus is the area below the price and above the uh, supply curve. So here's the price, here's the supply curve. It would be this triangle here, and that's the trapezoid area four, and the uh, little triangle five. And so we come over here, and in equilibrium, producer surplus would be four and five. The consumer producer surplus, remember, since this is an input market, this is the labor market, um, the, the who is this going to here is, is a little bit backwards than what you might normally think. The uh, producers in the labor market, the suppliers in the labor market are people. The people who would be working at the minimum wage. Okay? And the consumers would be the firms that are hiring workers. Now we want to think, well, well what are the effects? What's consumer sur surplus and producer surplus at the minimum wage? Uh, consumer surplus is the area of below the demand curve and above the price, which is now W min. So W min is here. So it's this triangle, and that's area one. So area one is the only area of consumer surplus with the minimum wage in place. The uh, producer surplus would be the area that's below the price and above the supply curve. And now when you, you've got a, a, a price control in place, well, it's, it can only be up to the uh, number of units that are, in, that are actually traded in the market. So you might initially think if it's below the price and above the supply curve, it would be this entire rectangle here. But that can't be because in firms only hire LD units of workers, and you can't have surplus on units that don't get traded or don't get uh, don't exist in equilibrium. So the um, the producer surplus would be uh, under W min and above the supply curve and up to LD. So that'd be areas two and four. And well, what's happened to areas three and five? They're the dead weight loss. They're the inefficiency of the uh, price control. We know that price controls are inefficient. We cover that in principles and say, like, okay, uh, you, you have a price control in place, you're, you're going to have some inefficiency in the, in the market because the equilibrium quantity is generally going to be the efficient quantity. And if, if you end up with either, if you end up with a, a smaller quantity than that, you've got some inefficiency. So areas three and four are dead weight loss. This would represent, these are the workers who don't get hired with a minimum wage in place, who wouldn't be working if, if there uh, wasn't a minimum wage. If those workers aren't working, then they can't be generating any surplus. They don't, gen they don't receive any surplus themselves, so they lose out on producer surplus, and then they're not generating any uh, uh, consumer surplus for the firms that are hiring them. So we lose areas three and five. That would be a loss to society. What we can see is that area two is a transfer. And area two was consumer surplus, which remember goes to firms in, in equilibrium, and becomes a producer surplus for the, uh, which is for the workers, with the minimum wage in place. So with the minimum wage in place, what we can see is that there is a transfer from firms, the, the, cons the, or the consumer surplus, to workers in this case. So the workers who manage to keep their jobs the, between zero and LD, the, the, the workers who keep their jobs at the minimum wage are now receiving a higher wage. They're better off. If, if they were working before for $10 an hour and the minimum wage gets boosted to $15 an hour, everyone who, who, who still works at the minimum wage, and if they're working, say, the same number of hours, if you're working the same number of hours, you're getting paid $5 an hour more, you're better off. You're, 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 so whatever the disutility of working is, it's, it's, the, it's the same as you had before. You're just getting more pay for that. And so this represents the transfer. It's a transfer from uh, consumer surplus from firms to workers. Uh, for people who think that, you know, who advocate a minimum wage and, and say like, oh, we need a, a minimum wage to address issues like livability or, or, or being you know, people being, being able to work and still be able to afford things in, in life. If we're saying like we want to uh, have a minimum wage and, 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 uh, to make workers better off, well, the transfer, the area of the transfer does show that. that is, so the minimum wage in some sense, uh, it, 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 it does achieve its uh, intended goal, in other words, of making some workers better off. The workers who keep their job make more money and they're better off. Um, now, there's a, a lot of controversy about the, some recent research uh, over the last 25 years or so 
that suggests that there's some new version of the minimum wage. That's not really true. I think everybody, this is this is supply and demand, and uh, this is about as basic as it gets in economics. The controversy over the minimum wage is what is the exact shape of the labor demand curve. If the labor demand curve, the steeper the labor demand curve is, the smaller the number of jobs lost that are going to be uh, when you impose a minimum wage. So if the, the labor demand curve is steep, you lose relatively few jobs. And since, uh, as I said before, everybody who still works at the minimum wage gets the higher wage, well, the, the, the transfer ends up being larger too. So the fewer jobs that are lost by, uh, when you have a minimum wage imposed, in other words, the, more, the steeper the demand curve is, the more effective the minimum wage will be at its intended uh, purpose, at the intended purpose of, of, of making some workers better off. The flatter the demand, the labor demand curve is, uh, the, then the more jobs that would be lost, the larger the dead rate loss, and since uh, relatively fewer workers who were working previously, say at the equilibrium wage, managed to keep their job, the smaller everything else equal that transfer to, to from firms to workers would be. And if, if you think of that transfer as the intended goal of the uh, of the minimum wage and the dead weight loss is sort of like the unintended or cost of the ball. Well, if the uh, the flatter the labor demand curve is, the less effective the minimum wage is, the smaller the area of the transfer and the larger the, the cost, the larger the area of dead weight loss. Uh, and so some of the, the, the controversy over the uh, minimum wage really sort of came from some studies that uh, suggested that the labor, that the uh, loss in, the lost jobs from the minimum wage would be quite small. And so it's a, it's a question about the empirical size of this loss in the number of jobs and thus the, the, the trade-off in evaluating the effectiveness of, of the minimum wage. I, I don't think like any uh, any serious economist is going to argue that uh, labor demand curves don't slope downward. So this is this is the basic uh, story of the minimum wage, and, uh, and because you've got the area of transfers versus this dead weight loss, those uh, you have two different uh, normative goals that will play here. There's an equity goal of trying to make workers better off, and then there's the efficiency goal of, of having uh, markets work well and have the uh, um, <clears throat> economic pie be as large as possible. And so you, know, you, you have conflicting uh, normative goals. So people could certainly uh, disagree. Even if you looked at, you know, two people could look at this diagram, agree on all of the basic facts of what's going on here. One person could say like, well, this uh, area two is, is worth areas three and five. Somebody else could look and say, well, no, this isn't, uh, this, this is bad versus that. So there's different ways you could use different values to, about, to uh, judge whether you think the minimum wage is effective or not, but it is it is uh, certainly true that the more inelastic labor demand is, the more effective the minimum wage would be, and and so that the the research that suggests that the labor demand might be relatively uh, inelastic is suggesting that the minimum wage could be a more effective uh, policy issue. Okay, so that's uh, the the effects of the minimum wage and some of the recent controversy.